All right, hello everybody and welcome to another beer frame. Uh, I know it's been a while for these, but we're going to try to do something different here. i got my buddy uh, Anthony Lockwood here, that. Uh, so we're going to try to... It's nice instead of just having just staring at me and having me ramble the entire time to have somebody else to kind of bounce stuff off of and get a different perspective or different some different ideas and stuff like that. So this is Anthony. Uh, he's actually the guy that took over for me in the pro shop too. So I was a little nervous about quitting because whenever you get into the pro shop world, you, it, it's a labor of love. Nobody gets into the pro shop business because they want to be rich. So <laughs> That's entirely true. <laughs> so uh, I, I was a little bit nervous about leaving because I didn't know who was going to take over for me and I didn't want to leave all the people that I had all those relationships and stuff with and then, uh, you know, stick them with somebody else. But when I found out he was going to take over for me, it uh, made it quite a bit nicer. So... Glad I appreciate that. I still get to see him <clears throat> quite a bit too. But uh, for starters, we're not actually having beer; we're having whiskey. This is the new uh, Crown Royal Salted Caramel that has just come out recently. So we're having some of that with some Sprite. And the interesting thing for me is it starts out very Crown-ish, so it's got a very whiskey start to it, but then you get a lot of the salted caramel. It's almost like taking a drink of whiskey and then putting like a Werther's in your mouth or something like that or with the, yeah. you know, one of the, one of the caramel. There's no whiskey hit. It's just the initial taste and then it's like swallowing a chocolate or something right after that. It's delicious. And the crown is generally pretty smooth anyway, so it's, 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 a, good, it's a good fit and it's a nice blend, so... It has yeah. been kind of hard to get a hold of, too. I had to jump through some hoops, and they didn't make near enough to meet the original demand. So <laughs> Imagine it, uh, that. It was going to be popular. <laughs> but it's good. It's worth trying to find if you can find it. So Yeah, that's good stuff. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, being on staff, because um, I've been a staffer with Storm since the uh, beginning of 2015, Anthony's just joined Hammer Staff under the EBI umbrella, and that's a really big question or a really big topic that most people ask about is like, how did you get on staff? They want to know about getting on staff, and a lot of people see it as generally you've done something. If you can get on staff with somebody, that's kind of how you know that you've arrived in the bowling world is when you get on a staff with somebody. I was just your typically average just above average high caliber bowler I'd say and uh, I tried to get on staff a few times previously and it never worked out um, but it's it's kind of like a job you've got to be selected out of the thousands and thousands of people that are putting their applications in and trying to get on staff for being great bowlers uh, but they may not necessarily fit with what they're looking for to sell their products or represent their products um, now that I've aged and had some positions where I've had to put a brand before myself, now that it's, it's shown that I can clearly make that happen and put a good name out for uh, the EBI products. Yeah. And most people, like you, like you said, when uh, a lot of the company reps, they get, they get applications all the time. They always have somebody dogging them. They always have somebody after them to get on staff. Because, like I said, for most people, it's kind of a it's 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 a personal goal or it's something that they chase kind of for their benefit, so that uh, you know every, everybody wants to be on staff so that they can get cheaper equipment or so that they can you know kind of have that prestige that comes along with oh you're on staff. So a lot of people chase it for what they get for it rather than kind of understanding what it's actually about. So the, being a staffer is basically, basically what it boils down to is that you're kind of promoting, or you're, you're like advertisement for the company. You're somebody that knows a lot about the products, so you're in a really good position to promote them. But what it's really about is uh, being a representative for the comp being a representative for the company and selling the equipment. That's that's really what their end goal is as far as putting somebody on staff. They want to find people that are good representatives for their brand and they want somebody who's passionate about the brand that's going to be a good representative about for them without having somebody that's just kind of chasing, you know, just sending emails into somebody and wanting cheap equipment. Yeah, emails, it, you know, I, I throw your stuff because it's the best stuff on the planet. That's all I throw. Um, 
It's it's fantastic. They get those emails, I imagine, every single day, especially around contract time. Um, but kind of like you said, it's a it's a sales position. You don't necessarily have a quota. Um, you don't necessarily lose a ton of income, um, but you've got to step up and explain why the brands are better, uh, why you think your product is the best, why somebody should buy your product and not another product. And with bowling balls uh, and bags today, it's kind of hard to explain why it's so much better. They're more kind of like gap fillers. What, what fits best for you with what you've already got? Um, and you've got to be able to explain why you feel like that. Um, but again, you're not traveling. You're not selling to like commercial accounts. It's just kind of a, a smaller interior sales job um, where you do actually have to put some effort and emphasize the brands. You don't just get free balls. You don't just get free bags. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, and there can be some stress. This is my first year. Um, I signed in May. Um, so the newness hasn't quite wore off. It's exciting. Um, but it's expensive. You know, it's, a. Uh, you know, I'm with the EBI family of brands. There's four brands. Yeah. And, you know, just recently, you know, I think this year we're at 12 or 14 new ball releases. Mm -hmm. Um, and unless you're on the pro staff traveling on tour, you're not getting a lot of that for free. So you are you do get it discounted, um, but that's still expensive when you look at it from a just a bottom dollar average pro shop worker salary. Um, yeah. I, think that, I think that's kind of a big misconception too is that everybody thinks once you get on staff, you get everything for free. That they just, something comes out and they just send you stuff or you... You know, you just put an order in and they ship you whatever you want. It's not like that. Now, we can't go into the specifics of what we actually pay for stuff. Yes, it is cheaper. But, uh, and while you might get, like, I think whenever whenever you sign, they'll send you, like, some shirts. Or you get kind of an entry package to kind right. of get you set up. But after that, if you want something, you got to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah, Hammer was nice enough to send me a couple of these shirts in a couple of different colors. Um, but, again, that's a small investment that they made to put their brand out. Mm -hmm. um, I do get to, you know, I have a bag that I get to, you know, drag with me to tournament the tournament that's got the hammer logos on it. But pretty much everything else I've purchased at a price. And um, lucky for me, I'm in a world that kind of allows me to do that at a lower cost. But, um, I mean, I've definitely invested some money. I, I almost can't afford to quit bowling at this point. <laughs> yeah. I'm, in, I'm invested. And see, that's one of the things, too, is that when you're a representative for a company, they don't they don't require you to buy everything that comes out. Like, you don't have to buy everything that comes out. If you're not interested in it, you don't have to get it. But at the same time, you're, you're a representative of the company. You're advertising for them. And so when something comes out, somebody is going to come ask you, okay, well, what do you think about this ball? And you can't really say, well, I'm not too interested in it, so I didn't get it. And so I don't really have anything to tell you. I mean, that's... There's kind of a, like I said, it's it's cheaper equipment, but you're kind of, you're not required to, but it's a really, really good idea to get everything that comes out, and especially with uh, a lot of the brands being under these umbrellas, like uh, Storm or Roto Grip, they just, they just got the two companies, but they do put out quite a few things a mm. year. Ebonite's got four brands under the umbrella, and some people are brand specific, like there's some people that are just Storm, there's some people that are just Roto Grip, there's some people that are just Hammer. It depends on the contract that you have, but uh, I think they're kind of opening things up now. And a lot of people are, you know, if you're on with EBI, you're probably going to be able to order everything they've got. Storm, you're going to be able to order everything they've got. And unless you're on with a smaller company like uh, Motive or 900 Global or something like that, where they don't have, they don't have any other brands under the umbrella and they don't put out, you know, they don't put out enough stuff to compete with everything that like EBI is putting out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it all adds up. That it does. And there's more coming every day. There's new information every day, new products every day, because it's not just bowling balls. We're talking bags. And, and you know, with Storm Roto, you guys have Master and um, EBI. We've got Robbie's and Powerhouse. So, I mean, you're talking cleaners, 
there, there's so much stuff coming out just because you don't see a new ball release on Facebook or on the website. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, you know, for instance, right now with the EBI family, the real one's coming. They've got a special promotion, and it's it's not just a ball that you can get. So now we want to, you know, we're bringing back originals from previous dates. Um, lucky for me, I've thrown some of those, and I can really kind of sell that promotion as for the best balls that were ever in in production yeah as far as i'm concerned yeah some of that's kind of a trick because like you said with that when you've got four balls and these balls came out you know seven eight years ago most of them did Mm -hmm. and so when you have somebody open a box and say that they find an angular one in there instead of a real one and then they're they're going to ask you okay well you're on staff with them so you should know what did this ball used to do when it was out so there's a lot of there's a lot of homework that goes into it too Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, it's not just re- review the balls and you know talk positively about them all the time. We'll get into um, a little bit of that stuff later, but um, it's there's a lot of stuff that goes into it that you just don't necessarily think about. So, uh, one of the questions uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a couple questions here. Um, the the biggest the biggest question is like how did you get on staff like what did you go through because a lot of people will send just uh, their they'll send their resume to the company they may not hear anything back they may hear something back and it might be you know sorry we we don't take applications right now or our contracts don't start until January or they don't start until whenever and the biggest thing is how we got on staff um, I actually had sent in a few you know I sent in a few staff applications but being that I wasn't uh, I was kind of part-time in a pro shop. I didn't bowl a whole lot of tournaments, and I, again, I would I would say that I'm kind of with him. I'm not an elite bowler, but I'm kind of on the better side of your amateur, regular house bowler that just kind of, you know, bowls tournaments whenever you can get to them. But uh, efforts, but before I became manager of the pro shop, the efforts were kind of fruitless. It was kind of like, well, you know, we appreciate your interest, but we're either full or don't have a spot for you, so... Um, but when I got on staff, or when I, not when I got on staff, when I became manager of the pro shop, somebody gave me the name of my regional rep, who's Brett Cooper with Storm. And so having a direct name or having somebody to talk to is a big help. And so I sent him an email. He said, you know, we don't take applicate or we were taking applications, but our contracts start in January. I think I sent him something like July or August or right. something like that. That's a long few months too. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's really, it's really long when you're waiting for, you know, you and then all of a sudden you you want to make sure that you're you're getting on Facebook and you're kind of mm. sowing the seeds and yeah <laughs> you know so you you try a little bit harder and then you just kind of got to wait the wait the few months but uh, uh, he did know the owner of the shop uh, the owner of uh, in the zone pro shop Jesse James he, he told Brett some favorable things about me so <clears throat> which were all true by the way <laughs> but, uh, you know, my, my story is almost exactly the same. Um, I got a name. Um, ultimately, I, I did try a few times with no success. Um, and then, you know, got a name. Uh, went out of my way to, to meet um, my direct representative, Tyson Brannigan. Um, went out of my way to meet him. Uh, kind of sold myself to him, what I, what I can do. Uh, what I'm available to do and uh, yes yes Um, and I went with that Um, I drilled some of the balls uh, from the EBI family Uh, I started throwing them giving my input um, over social media Um, you know hashtagging has been a thing I swore I never would do and now all of a sudden you know I'm probably averaging two a post Fred Callahan, I'm looking at you, by the way. <laughs> hashtag. Hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> um, but when I started throwing them, I really liked them. I was throwing all sorts of stuff before that. Um, and when every company's making great bowling balls, um, it's kind of hard to change entirely because brand to brand, there's a completely different shape. I had to, I had to change some things to, to make EBI work for me. But it was so simple and so easy for a power dominant player to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And especially with having the four brands right. having access to that if if something obviously there's gonna be some stuff you don't match up with, but having four brands you're you're gonna find some stuff, especially if it's got like a spider on it or something that you should <laughs> right. pretty that, safe bet there. But any bowling ball with a spider on it, it's absolutely worth a purchase mm-hmm. for sure, especially if it's gold in color. Storm so. staff or no comment. <laughs> but, um, I'll say the code black is good. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I mean that—that's one thing too. Is you got to be fair about it. You can't just—they want people to be honest about, honest about the equipment. Now, obviously, when we throw nothing but that equipment, and we're very familiar with it, we're going to know how to make anything that's out there work for us. And like you said, you know, it's—it's it's no secret that a few years ago, Ebonite was kind of, you know, not making the greatest stuff. But there's, you know, the the brands, but everybody's making great stuff right now. I mean, it's everybody is making really good equipment, and I think that's a good thing for the bowling industry in general because everybody's kind of pushing everybody to uh, come up with stuff or at least you know, do their due diligence when they're releasing equipment. Can't get caught sleeping. Yeah. Because if you, you take a day off at you know, an R&D department at a bowling, uh, bowling supplier or bowling manufacturer, somebody else is not. So, you know, you get caught sleeping and all of a sudden there's a, a no rules pearl that just sweeps the just sweeps the bowling world right away. You see it on T V and you know, you see people trying to keep up with it. And then then something like a Maverick Pearl comes and everybody's mm-hmm. on T V using it and nobody's getting that shape. Um you know, on a, a side note to all of that being on staff, um, adding a pro shop to that makes it somewhat difficult too because you're not selling only that brand you're not selling i'm not only selling the the four brands within the ebi umbrella i've got to find what's good for that individual and they may not match up exactly uh to something that i like personally mm-hmm. they may uh have thrown storm their entire life and that's what they're they're accustomed to and that's what they want to throw or they may have thrown uh you know started throwing motive and live and die by that we know a couple guys like that um so you have it on hand for them and you do your best with the knowledge that you've got but it all comes down to um you know i think uh, i was asked a question recently why don't you just ask a bowler that's stuck in a brand why they don't try something else mm-hmm. you know if we weren't uh you know, stuck to a series of brands, we could throw whatever we wanted. Why did we choose this over that or mm-hmm. that over this? Um, ultimately, like I said, a sales job, but the idea is to just find out why and get to the root of any sales job. Somebody's in a pro shop for a reason. They're not happy with their their game. They're not happy with their equipment. Um, I guess unless it's a Tuesday night in Topeka and then it's just they're not happy with looking at the approaches and pins and they just want to look at the bowling balls on the wall. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> Interesting. Uh, but ultimately, you know, you had a pro shop to that and you don't want to, you know, let your your family down by not selling their product, but, you know, you also want to succeed at, as a career. And, you know, if you limit people from buying what they want, just like anywhere else, you're going to be a Kmart. You're going to have closing signs up everywhere. Yeah, and that, that's that's one thing. Is as far as being on staff, being a pro shop really helps because unless you're in a pro shop where you have a direct line to somebody where you're interacting with people on a daily basis, you've got to be you've got to be out just bowling tournaments all the time, and you've got to be bowling and a lot, winning so. tournaments. Yeah, you've got to be you've got to be doing good stuff for the brand. Um, as far as far as that goes, too, they don't they also don't want people that just talks everything up because everybody kind of looks at a staffer like well you know you're on staff you have to talk good about stuff if somebody comes in for a certain reaction and you don't have it within your brands you don't it's it's kind of hard to admit it's like well there's there's some balls that just that ball from 900 global just does something that a storm and roto grip ball doesn't do and if you have to you have to still sell the customer what's best for them because if you always do that and you're always honest. The next ball that they might buy, it might be a storm ball or it might be a hammer ball. And that might honestly be the best thing for them. 
And at that point, whenever you do talk them into something, you, they know that you're being honest with them. They know that, well, you're not just selling them something because you're with Hammer or because you're with Storm or whatever else. So um, that's it's very important to be honest about it rather than just kind of talking everything up because that that's one of the first things that you, when you get on staff, you want to hashtag stuff mm-hmm. a lot. You want to talk, you want to say the best things that you can say about absolutely everything. And then you kind of realize... It, when you start talking to people, like I'm on ballreviews.com a lot. I, I spend a lot of time on that forum, and there's some people there that says, oh, oh great, you know, there's another review from other staff, or there's one guy on there that I think got on the storm this year that just everything is just cliche after cliche after cliche after this ball's great, you need it, you have to have it. And it's like they get on there and they kind of make fun of that general opinion. And uh, that's something that I picked up on pretty quick, and I think that that's something that's that you got the idea for. And you know, I have a lot of people on there that really respect my opinion. There's a lot of people that really respect his opinion too, because they know that we're going to tell it to them like it is. So, if if you can get people to understand, or you can be as honest as possible, then they're going to trust you. If you just if you just tell them that everything is good, it's like. Well, what about this ball? Well, that that one's good. Or what about this ball? Well, that one's good too. And if they get something that they're not happy with, and all of a sudden it's not just that ball they look at. If they if they get a timeless, if I if I sell them a timeless because I just talk it up and you know don't really tell them well this is this is what's good about it, this is what's bad about it, and try to match it up for them, and they get it and they don't like it, they're not going to say okay well that ball just didn't work for me. It's going to be storm sucks. And that guy talked me into it because he was a staffer and he's trying mm-hmm. to sell equipment. And they're never going to listen to you again. But at the same time, you don't really want to go out of your way to dog stuff because you're still a representative of the company. And sometimes it's hard to get people to understand that you know the equipment better than anybody. And so when I make a video for something and it looks good for me, even though, I mean, the timeless looked pretty good in the video for me. But it's sometimes the shots that you don't see or the the kind of things that, you know, what your eye likes seeing and stuff like that. Balls that make you change your game to shape up the way you want them to. Yeah. Um, That's something I've got to see a lot because I'll throw a ball sometimes that I may or may not like, but I can almost automatically envision somebody I think it would roll really good for. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, there's always, you know, as a pro shop, you you get to see people bowling hours and hours of the day. And, you know, I threw this ball and it didn't quite shape up for me, but somebody who just has a little higher tilt, they can get the ball down the lane a little further. Mm-hmm. They're going to see this ball outstandingly. Then you've got, you know, the vice versa option where you see somebody throwing something that you didn't throw. You know, man, I'd be, I think with those numbers, it would match up to me. So there's... There's always a coin flip with if it's going to be good. You know, I, I never use standard layouts. I always laid stuff out for what I wanted. Mm. You drill enough balls, you're going to have a standard layout soon. Yeah. And you're going to be able to compare it, you know, to something else. And, you know, that's one thing in your videos. I don't remember seeing any layouts, but. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to get to that. There will be another video. <laughs> but, uh. But I've watched you drill enough balls to know that you've got a pretty standard series of layouts that you like to use based on what you're drilling. And uh, I'm now to that point where it's just too hard to keep that much information and then throw some crazy layout on something just because you want to see what you do. You know, get a second one for that, I guess. But. Yeah. And especially, like I said, when you get that familiarity with the brand, I when I first started, I tried a bunch of different layouts, and I found you you event. I mean, it's it's not really hard. It's not nothing. It's nothing that you really try for. You just eventually you find what works and you stick with it. All right, so. Uh, got By the few, way, this is delicious. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm gonna send a shout out to Bruce Thoman. I keep calling him Thoman, even though it's Thoman, mm-hmm. uh, for supplying the bottle of liquor tonight. He'll find out shortly that he donated it to our show. Um, so, but shout out to Bruce for that. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> All right, so uh, moving on to the next point here. There are several different pros and cons of being on staff. Everybody thinks it's just okay you get on staff, you get a bunch of free equipment, and life is just peachy after that. But we are going to start with the pros first because 
being on staff is pretty awesome. I mean, it's it's nice, especially especially if you like bowling a lot. It gives you big opportunities. It's a big foot in the door to a lot of different things. The equipment's cheaper. You have a lot of personal resources. I, I think I know that uh, Storm has a Facebook page. Evan, I'd imagine has a Couple has, has a staff group on Facebook. And so, if you have any questions, if you and a lot of big name people, I mean, like I get to talk to I can I can talk to Leanne Holsenberg if I want to. I can talk to I can just tag I can tag Wes Malott or uh, Stuart Williams or right. somebody on uh, on on the Facebook page. They don't always post a whole lot on there, but. Uh, Chad McLean, the technical director, is pretty active on there. So you can get people that, you know, people where this kind of stuff originates, like Steve Klompkin, people that are, are, the, are the people that are sitting in rooms thinking this stuff up. You can get, you know, specific, direct information, you know, unfiltered that they'll tell you exactly what's going on. And so that's really nice to have that kind of stuff. And it's... A lot of the people that you meet too is just really oh, there's yeah. some really awesome people that work for these companies, and it's also an opportunity to kind of progress your career. It gives you a lot of different options. It might even open up to getting a position with the company or kind of it just just a lot of different things. You have a lot of different opportunities. It, I mean, being on staff really is a pretty awesome thing. Yeah, other than just. You know, a few things we kind of pointed out. I can't think of any reason why I wouldn't want to continue on on staff. There's uh, there's so many pros to it. Like you said, the the lesser expense, um, which I think I kind of contradict because I spend a lot more money now on bowling balls and equipment than I did ever before yeah that, that's um, that, that's the first point that i have on the cons here that i'm looking at on the screen it's you know it's it a, is, <laughs> it's I, cheap but it's not so yeah i you know and i get i'm constantly making an order putting something through and you know they don't they don't hesitate to pull it from my account just like any of the customers in a pro shop um but yeah i can't think of a single reason why i wouldn't want to do that um you know i've I've grown to really like where I'm at um, on staff under the EBI umbrella. Um, like you mentioned, the Facebook pages, mm-hmm. um, the word family comes up a whole bunch. Oh, yeah. You know, you and I talked about watching the some of the Facebook videos from the storm teams across the sea and, you know, how just it's a real family-oriented kind of place. And a lot of these companies are built like that. Um and you said something about a position within the company. They love promoting within. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of a good opportunity to congratulate a couple of guys from the EBI umbrella. Dave Wadka, for one, just got a huge, yeah. huge promotion within the EBI umbrella because he lives and dies by the brands, and um, mm-hmm. and he had to start somewhere. You know, he wasn't always where he was as a district salesperson. Um and they, they like bringing people up. They already have knowledge of the base. You know, they're, they like bringing people from the beginning stages through the company. It just, it benefits them. Um, yeah, it just makes sense when you've got somebody that's, uh, again, when, when, you're, when you're staff loyal or when you're on a staff, I mean, sometimes it's a little, because honestly, you do look at some other stuff. Like, you have a ball like the Black Widow Gold that comes out that's really good. And you're like, you know, I'd really like to throw that, but you look at all your other stuff and you're so comfortable with it and you're so familiar with it. It's like, well, yeah, but I've got these five other balls that I, I can't decide between. So why the crap would I want to, you know, mess with that? But yeah, I'll throw myself under the bus and talk about that hustle link for a second. That yeah. I've got to watch you pretty much evolve your life around yeah, two of these all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, but it just kind of goes back to that original point of how great all of these bowling balls are, mm-hmm. including an HP one ball from Roto. Um, it's just it's just phenomenal what what we can do with bowling balls and what these R R D guys are doing uh, to get the prices down um, and still make fantastic equipment. And I'm all of a sudden a fan of the four inch pin. Mm-hmm. You know, I always liked longer pins and yeah. taller pins, and now all of a sudden, even on big ASIM pieces, I had such a hard time throwing ASIM pieces forever. And you know, but I'd always put some crazy weak layout or crazy strong layout on something and. Mm-hmm. Instead of giving it a chance and, you know, drilling it like everything else and getting close, 
that does a really good job when you're in a house full of league and everybody's looking, oh, is that that new Gold Widow? Oh, is that that, that new No Rules Pearl? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you, can, you can't hide from everyone. Your, your idea is to get your stuff out there and, you know, when you bowl bad, people see it. And if your shape is bad, you know, and you're six counting, seven counting a lot, you're not really selling that ball much. So you can't really, I guess my, my point to that is getting back to the honest point. You can sit there and talk it up all you want, but if you're getting six and sevens a whole bunch on a house pattern yeah. and trying to sell a ball, people eventually will catch on. The added point to that is, you know, the pro shop now is my full-time gig, the job that actually pays the bills in my home. So, you know, it doesn't do me any good to upset a person, like you said, if we can't find the ball within that brand. And it doesn't uh, do the company any good either. So that's... Right. I mean, that's another thing. You're Sometimes if you sell them, you might be protecting the brand or helping your brand out by selling somebody a ball from another brand. Right. Because of, again, going back to what I said, you sell somebody something and they don't like it, it's not that ball sucks. It's the whole freaking company sucks. So, and that pro shop operator sucks. So yeah. I'm not going to go back to him, especially if you're in a market with more than one pro shop. Mm -hmm. You know, it's there's always another option, it seems like. And if you don't find a way to be honest and allow yourself to always be the first real option, mm -hmm. it's so easy to lose people. We, we live in a world where people almost sometimes expect bad service. And good service kind of takes them off their guard. Mm -hmm. And bad service, they've already got a plan B. They already know where they can go. There's social media that sells, you know, bowling balls all over the country. And you can have it tomorrow. Yeah. You know, we've got to be the reason. We've got to sell ourselves and, you know, do the right thing by them, the customer, to make it work. If you don't, I mean, I might be looking for another job somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's a lot of people that do walk in the door expecting them expecting you to just look at them like they're a number, and that's that's one thing that in the like I said in the pro shop world you don't get into it because you want to get rich. So that's that's one thing good about most pro shops, but there's a lot of pro shops too that have more passion than experience or knowledge. But again, that's a that's another right. <laughs> yeah, that's a different video. <laughs> so. Uh, Look at the, the first the first con of being on staff, like we talked about, is it's a lot more expensive than you'd think because while everything is cheaper, there's a lot more of it to buy and there's a lot more that you should buy. And just looking kind of at my my setup here, they don't they don't necessarily require you to do videos, but any any time that you can promote or you can advertise or you can do more, that's always better for your position, it's better for the brand, it's better for whatever. But all, all the money that I've made on YouTube in the last three years or however long I've started it is sitting right here in front of us. I, I mean, so I'm, I'm so far in the red as far as expenses go on just my, just my YouTube thing. We're not even talking about equipment. We're not talking about shirts and bags and everything else. And yes, time. Yeah, well, yeah, time's another big thing, too, because it's, it's a huge... I've got people sending me stuff on, they comment on my YouTube videos, they send me stuff on Facebook Messenger, send me emails, and this is all okay with me. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where we love bowling, we yeah. love to talk bowling, and so when somebody thinks, uh, it's also kind of cool when people consider you kind of an authority on things, or when they really value your opinion, you want to share stuff with them, so it's not, it's not like I'm complaining about that or anything, but sometimes it is fairly time consuming, and you find yourself, like I've been all day um, making videos and putting this, putting this set up and everything, so it is fairly time consuming, and um, <laughs> we're trying to make it more fun by a, right. a, a, a nice experience. A nice uh, excuse to sit here and drink and ramble at a camera, but right, yeah, I can't think of many things better than drinking whiskey, talking bowling, and Hello Kitty over your right shoulder. That would be a pro. That would go in the pro <laughs> column. <laughs> um, something else on the cons, um, you know, again, it's my first year, um, and like any, you know, sales job, there's always going to be a little bit of pressure. You know, you want. Uh, you've got somebody that's in, in charge of you, um, in charge of helping you, directing you to 
promote their brand because they're getting paid full time to do this position. Um, and, you know, something happens or, you know, for instance, uh, a ball comes out that not a lot of people get into. Um, you can see and you can feel it because um, ultimately your brand is what you what they want you to push. Uh, so there's a little added pressure um, to that as of now. Um, you know, I'm five months into into trying this out, so I'm sure that changes over time. But you know, the first couple of times I sold a bowling ball that were in the, you know, not in the four brands, I felt like I was cheating on a girlfriend. Yeah. You know, it was like, oh yeah. man, I'm I'm not doing anybody any good. Um, so it takes a little getting used to, also. All right, where were we at? We had to take a break to uh, refresh some beverages, so. We're back and even more excited than we were before. Completely true. Mixed my drink a little stronger this time with a little more of the salted caramel from Crown Royal in it. And it's just like drinking candy. It's it's really the only thing that's masculine about it at all is it says whiskey on the bottle. <laughs> yeah. um, true story. But it's fantastic. So yeah, definitely, it's, it's... Uh, definitely find a bottle. Try it, especially if you're a whiskey fan. Uh, it's going to be great for all drinkers. I, I like it a whole bunch. And I imagine you could probably just have it on the rocks, too. I mean, Crown's already smooth enough to where it doesn't, like, hit your tongue and make you start twitching or anything. It's already pretty smooth, and especially with a flavor like this, like the Crown Vanilla is kind of like that, too, where you can just kind right. of sit there and sip on it without having to add anything in there. But uh, Yeah, we were so excited when we got this bottle that... It was a couple of uh, on the rock sips right out of the bottle when we first opened it. So I'm a huge Crown Royal fan. I love uh, collecting the bags and uh, the orange bag that it comes in. I've yet to get my hands on, uh, but it's one of the coolest bags I've seen too. So if you're into the Crown Royal bags, definitely one to get for yourself too. How's that? Uh, how's that bottle of XR coming along? I got mm. in a. Uh... Got him a bottle of XR for Crown uh, Extra Rare for Christmas last year. You still got some of that I left. do have a little bit of that left, yeah. It, it, it comes out. It's one of those, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but it comes in a big box, and you open the box, and it sits on its own pillow in a <laughs> special blue bag, and it's almost as much work to take it out as it is to put it back up. So it's definitely a special occasion whiskey, uh, something with the leftovers from the LaSalle uh, flavors that they had once upon a time, and it is by far the smoothest whiskey that I've probably had ever, and I'm, I'm a true bourbon whiskey fan, yeah. so it's fantastic. I was surprised for sure to even see it, <laughs> but uh, that was probably one of the best Christmas presents ever, and it's almost christmas again and here i am gonna bring it over to celebrate christmas <laughs> yeah but now we will we will still be having beer we will still be i mean because you can't again like i said in my last video having the having the pbr sign it makes you really feel like you're talking some bowling so <laughs> we will still feature beer we're just gonna try to mix it up a little bit just stuff that you would have while you're at the bowling alley so i think i have an idea for the next one so let me know when this is going to happen. I'll bring it over. I'll surprise yeah, yeah. you with it. Sweet. All right. So that's, I think that we were kind of at the end, uh, at the end of the talking about the cons, and it's really it's a bigger expense than you think it is. It is really time consuming, which you know it's really rewarding at the same time. But uh, there are some requirements. There's some responsibilities. You always need to carry yourself well. You can't be somebody that's in a bowling alley with a hammer shirt on, kicking ball returns, and screaming at the top of your lungs and stuff like that. Um, they do want you to, they do want you to fairly regularly post on social media. Obviously, they don't want you going overboard. <coughs> Fred Callahan. Fred Callahan. <laughs> Hashtag Fred Callahan. <laughs> Fred, Fred's a great guy. I hope, I hope he watches this. And uh, Fred, Fred and I have become, uh, become kind of Facebook friends here. It's worth a Google. Fred uses more hashtags than I've ever seen ever. <laughs> I, I think he has more hashtag. The hashtag section of his Facebook posts is longer than what he actually posts. But <laughs> Fred's a great guy, though, Fred. But uh, uh, 
limited to throwing the brands. You know, it's you know you don't get to throw some of the stuff when other companies are making really good stuff. You're you're uh, you're held within your brands. Um, apparel. I mean, I've seen some really slick storm jerseys come out from all the companies. Mm-hmm. Um, Motive is doing some really cool things on the apparel side. I've seen. Um, seen some really cool motive bags too, like that right. uh, that white out bag or the the, the white bag that their, right. their triple bag looks. And really that nice. nine hundred global bag from a year or two ago. Yeah, that super heavy duty bag. A I mean, couple of years ago, nine hundred global was making the best bag on the market, bar none. And I think again that goes back to talking about kind of everybody else upping their game. Now mm-hmm. Storm's got some Rolling Thunder bags that are really nice, and um, I'm sure Hammer's got some. They do have they do have some really good stuff. Teaming up with KR is a really cool deal. Mm-hmm. Um, KR makes some fantastic stuff. Um, you know, you got one note here about talking about the brands. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've and I've not seen it much, but I have seen people come in and, you know, hey, I, they see a hammer patch or a hammer shirt that I'm wearing while I'm in the bowling center, and you know, hey, hammer sucked for me. Um, you know, what are they making now that's any good? That's kind of a tough question because they're not even expecting you to give them an honest answer. They're just expecting you to say, what you talking about, man? Yeah. Hammer's great. Like, look, I'm on with Hammer. And they're thinking, well, obviously you have to talk it up. So it's it's more kind of a challenge. They go into it with an expectation that you're just going to kind of, oh, well, you're wrong and whatever else. So it's... Mm-hmm. Right. So you really got to be careful the way you answer those questions because, like he said, they're expecting you to talk it up and... You know, hey, you know, it doesn't work for everybody. You know, the cool thing about the Hammer deal is there's three other brands that I may be able to point somebody in the direction toward. Uh, You'll get the Storm guys that walk in or the Motive guys that walk in and, you know, hey, don't sell me any of that stuff. Don't sell me the Hammer stuff. That's not what I'm here for. So I I, I don't get to see that a whole bunch, but I have seen it. in years of pro shopping period but lately now since i'm in there full time it's different um and with i don't walk into a bowling center just like you you know without my my hammer logo of some kind uh my turbo logos of some kind it's yeah, just you do need to you do need to wear branded equipment branded apparel uh, anytime you're in a bowling center i think most of most of the time it's in the contract that uh, you need to be, if you're in a bowling center, it doesn't matter if you're going to watch somebody else, you know, you need to be wearing the apparel and you always need to have nice apparel and having, you know, having jerseys like this is nice. And the jersey thing's kind of exploded here recently with, you got Logo Infusion and High Five and... Chameleon uh, Sportswear, um, Apparel Effects, mm-hmm. Bolify. Yeah. There, there's so many great brands out there that are making jerseys within our world with, you know, registered rights to print the logos. And the jerseys aren't cheap. <laughs> they are not cheap, especially they're, if you want to customize. They're very they're very nice, but yeah, unless you pick the stock jersey, the stock jerseys are expensive enough and watch um, Facebook though, because you do see some specials. They'll yeah, they'll some put some specials. stuff out. I saw one on Facebook for, you know, a twenty nine dollar jersey. I don't remember which company it was for. Uh, but just scrolling through the feed, if you go through and log in, it'll actually pull up the the price sheet. Um, and unless you want to, you know, add a turbo logo or add link to it or sizes, you know, you're not going to be spending anything more than twenty nine dollars. So they're they're out there. But if you're going to go buy a jersey with your name on it or uh, your specific logo wants, I would be expect to spend at least a hundred bucks. Working. Um, but for me, and just like you, it, it's a pride thing. Proud to be part of a, proud to be a part of a family like that. Work. We both worked really hard to mm-hmm. get where we were. We did something that we love to do. Um, I'm almost gonna say the word rewarded yeah. with a with a contract. Um, so you know when you see me in a bowling center wearing the logo, it's because I chose to wear it. I mean, there mm-hmm. I don't have. Anybody standing down my throat telling me what I have to do, they have set some expectations. Um, but I don't throw a ball of practice without right. a hammer logo and a turbo logo on my shirt. Mm. Um, I don't sit in a bowling center watching people bowl without it. It's a, it's a pride thing for me. 
Um, and I couldn't be happier to be where I'm at currently. So some of these cons that we talk about, we're pointing out more for, I think, informational purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just more or less letting you know what you're getting yourself into. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, overall, we, we, we both agree that it's a, it's a really good experience. You do have to be realistic about you know, what you're getting yourself into and what kind of a commitment it really represents. But uh, saying rewarded is a really good, it's a really good way to put it. Um, because you don't, it's, it's not like you just kind of, they send you a bunch of stuff and you just get to throw stuff and kind of talk it up and it's like a beneficial thing for you. I mean, there is definitely a, a give and take and it is a lot better, it is a lot bigger commitment than most people realize it is. Um, a lot of these people, you look at these people on TV and think, well, they've got such a great life, but they live, they eat, sleep, and die bowling 24-7, 365. Mm-hmm. It's just, it really does represent a huge commitment and a lot of sacrifice that people make on a daily basis. doesn't matter what that day is. doesn't matter if it's Christmas. doesn't matter if it's Thanksgiving. It doesn't matter whatever the the biggest thing is oh you're so lucky you're on staff it's a big sacrifice but ultimately it's one of those risk reward things it's it's a big sacrifice it's a big commitment it's kind of expensive sometimes especially <laughs> when you really like a ball like the hustle ink and i'm mm. sitting here wanting to order another case of them right um but at the same time you get out of it what you put into it and yeah adding to that point you you see these guys on tv on pro staff with these companies and that's their job. That's that's what they do. You know, you'll see pros at Junior Gold. You know, they have no intention of throwing a bowling ball that week. Uh, but they're supporting the sport, supporting the, the venue, supporting their brands. Um, I mean, you constantly see that. Chad McClain in... Uh, yeah, Korea been, or wherever they were yeah, just at. Yeah, they've been in Japan for a week, week and a half. You know, that's, and it may sound all fun and good, but there's work to be done. That's a long um, plane ride. One thing that stands out to me specifically is uh, I bowled the Inside Bowling Open in St. Louis two years ago, and mm-hmm. I watched Brandon Allred from Logo Infusion sit at a table for hours and hours and hours just as long as they were streaming mm-hmm. he was over there selling jerseys because that's that's what he does and you know that's just taking pride in your work and bowl expo is a big thing too bowl expo yeah yeah that's a week-long event mm-hmm. that's just an absolute up and down kind of trip you know if you're working for these companies get out for a demo day today get in the booth tomorrow go from the booth back to a demo day it's that's tough work you know we we do have it fairly easy on our end um, but we have expectations too our jobs is not quite the same mm-hmm. and I think I would have to say for <clears throat> for YouTube too like this is something that's been very rewarding for me but it's it's a lot of costs it's a lot of time it's nothing that they require me to do but it's one of those things where I'm not in the pro shop full-time anymore and so it's it's something that I've kind of had to look at and it's it's like well I don't I don't bowl a whole lot of these tournaments my big claim to fame for being on staff was kind of being in the pro shop and i i talked to a lot of people the youtube thing's really taken off so that's kind of nice but uh, um that's something that i've had to think about too is i'm not in a pro shop anymore i'm not talking to people in the pro shop on a daily basis i'm talking to a lot of other people on a daily basis but i still have to provide value to the company it's not like it's not like you just get your foot in the door and then it's like well I'm already on staff, so they're just going to keep sending me a contract, even though I'm not really putting in the work anymore. So um, that's I have I seen people too, so. that didn't get their contracts by email um, for one reason or the next, just over the years of being in the bowling world that were either shocked or, you know, hey, I really probably should have done something else. You know, mm-hmm. shooting 300s doesn't get you a contract. I don't remember where I heard it, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Randy Peterson or somebody on an extra frame event or something like that that, uh, you know, hey, you double in the 10th to win the U.S. Open, you'll get your contract. Yeah. (laughs) Double in the 10th to win it. Um, Something like that will get you in the door. Um, But you got to keep doing it. But then, yeah, you can't just not bowl beyond that or you can't travel and and do your part beyond that. It's it's a responsibility. Mm Mm-hmm. 
I think that's all we got for this one. This is hopefully we'll now that we've now that we've got this. I think the big thing about this is I, I think I told you in uh, one of my I think my first podcast when I started doing those that I've been trying to work on a bunch of stuff and it just hasn't worked out and I didn't I hadn't I I'd, I'd been wanting to do something like this put up a set or something but uh, I've been trying to work with my brother over at the brewery to to get in there but they're busy and then trying to work with my schedule's different than from his schedule and then whatever they have their stuff available but now that we have this i think that it uh will open up a lot of stuff and so we'll be able to do more of these beer frames and we'll have some actual beer frames instead of whiskey frames but whiskey frame is pretty just good, as too. good this is yeah. just as good yeah. um but uh this is nice this is nice to be able to do to have somebody else to bounce ideas off of and talk to and uh kind of have like a, a a little bit of a round table type thing so uh for Anthony and myself, he's the round. This is the table. But um, Tess. Oh man, he made a fat. He made a fat joke. He just can't grow a beard like I can. Uh, interesting. <laughs> Not sure that that beard can fit in the fit in the frame there. But uh, anyway, this is uh, Luke and Anthony. We'll see you next time. <laughs> oh, but Tess with the round uh, table. Oh, shit.